The Craft Beericans, doing their part to make America better, one craft beer at a time. Episode 88. Two married men with children, just uh, probably humiliating our wives and children in the process. Probably but so. We, we know the Smurf song. And we sang it in unison. In unison. I mean, that's pretty good for 40 year old men. Yes. I'm just saying. Yes, indeed. And we are uh, we're live, obviously, here on Facebook Live, but also recording for episode 88 of the Craft Barricans. Yes, it's been a while. We apologize. Uh, we decided to spend some time with our family and not drink, so we were we were being responsible. That's right. It's always important family to be responsible. We're family men. When it comes to the end of it, we're always family men. And we're are, I'm excited about this episode for a number of reasons, <laughs> because we decided a while back all the 80s episodes, all the number of 80s episodes, would be an 80s theme. It, yes, and you know what? I can't take any credit for this. This is all you. You're the one that said, hey, let's do 80s, and I jumped on board and said, let's do it, but I said, I hope you have ideas. Yes, because we're children of the 80s, and for me, other than my love of professional wrestling, Smurfs defined the 80s for me as a child. Third grade, saw an ad in the paper talking about the upcoming fall season of cartoons, and I saw these little blue creatures and I was intrigued from the beginning and 40 years later nearly 30 plus years later <laughs> 35 years later I am still intrigued by these creatures I have a love and respect for the Smurfs I will give you that I love the new movies they're a lot of fun but I like their spin-off the little knockoff snorks <laughs> just gonna put it out there we need to figure out a way to incorporate them into an 80s episode. I, I was a fan of the Snorks, but they were definitely a, a kind of a, a ripoff of the Smurfs. <laughs> but, uh, so in this episode and all the 80s, we're really going to be talking about things that kind of we connected with as our childhood or our youth. And I'm sure many of you are, are the same way. Uh, right now, we are streaming live. If you have questions... We have a laptop in front of us. Ask away. Um, be silly. We've already been drinking. I've been drinking half the day. So <laughs> this could be interesting uh, for the 80s episode. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. And I, not to be one to be left out, I started uh, as well. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sharing this on other places. So if people want to log in and, and do the Facebook Live thing with us or watch it on YouTube, as we said, uh, Craft Beerkins and all the social media platforms. We're everywhere on social media. Man, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and then we also like for you guys to follow us individually. So each one of us, all the Craft Beerkins, uh, Kevin Huntsberger, Todd Ellis, Todd Bryant, and myself, Tom Harness, are on pretty much all social platforms. But uh, please follow us. Let us know what you think. We really want to take Craft Beerkins to the next level. So give us some feedback on, on the show. And what you'd like to see, what you don't like to see, but let's uh, let's have some fun with this. And speaking of seeing, you can't really see your Smurfy shirt there, man. I know, right? Gotta show that off too. Yeah, I, I, you you got the best one because you're what? Who are you? Call me Big Papa, baby. Got this for Father's Day a few years ago, and I wear I break it out every year for Father's Day, but I wear it, you know, for other occasions as well. Little known fact, I'm a big Notorious B.I.G. fan, so I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that, and you let me borrow this shit. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. we're going to, everything's going to be themed. Yes. And uh, we got a couple of firsts here, which is going to be really exciting to talk about. But uh, we decided to flip this around mm -hmm. a little bit, and we're going to start off this episode talking about our, our person that we want to name a beer after. That's right. That's right. It's Gargamel. Who's not really a person technically, he's a person in the Smurf world, but you may not go out and meet him, you're not going to see him trending on Facebook or Twitter right now, but he's our guy. And I'm just going to throw this out there, he's a bastard. He is a bastard, he wants to kill and eat all the Smurfs. Yeah, and I don't. I never understood the whole eat part, that he wanted to put them in, they don't look like there's much, I mean look at this. They're, I wouldn't eat that. I mean, yeah, I would definitely And allegedly that. you can make gold out of them, but... I, I don't know. I, I would not eat a Smurf, and this is our... So... That's our, our guy today. Yeah. Craft beer Smurf. And what's amazing is this, actually, the beer one is at your station. It's actually I keep where it at work, work and you I look at him work. every day, and I think, hmm... I need a beer. I need a beer. I need a beer. <laughs> so what do you name Gargamel, who is, is, is a self-proclaimed bastard, 
to the uh, to the Smurfs. I think it's only fitting that we choose a beer that has the word bastard in it. Yeah. So, and it's one of my actually favorite beers. I love this one. Um, it's by Stone Brewery, and it is the Arrogant Bastard Ale. So hopefully many of you have tried that. Um, give it a shot. Uh, it's much better than Gargamel. Uh, let me tell you that. But uh, I think it's fitting because Gargamel's a bastard. I, I agree. And I need to try Arrogant Bastard because... I've been called that myself in the past. I'm not gonna name names, but I've never had it. And I know you, when you came in, Greg Mahachko, friend of mine uh, over at the Jittery Monkey Podcasting Network, suggested Arrogant Bastard for a show sometime. So maybe we can one of these days do that too. But I remember ordering that for you one time uh, at a lunch meeting that we had. So We did. Oh, I don't know if we're on here, but I saw something pop up there. I can't quite see from here because we're old. Keith Huckabay and Lisa Mann and Devin Kidd have all joined. I shared this on my... If you guys are friends of mine, which all three of you are, like the Craft Barricans page too. We're kind of being silly here today, so... Silly or drunk? And they all know us. They all Or they all know me. Lisa knows you, but... I'm being me. This is me. This is not TV, Kevin. This is, you know, weekend. I, I, Kevin. I feel perfectly, I, I'm in exactly the same boat. This is me, too. <laughs> we have fun, we drink, and we do this. So um, if you get a, if you've, if you've tried Arrogant Bastard L, let us know. Put it up here. Let's tell us, your, tell us what your thoughts are on that. And, uh, but we're going to move on in this episode because we try not to draw these out too much. Now, I'm very excited. We have a, a, a yeah. mutual friend. His name is Doug Brinkley. Doug? I just saw you with the Southern Illinois Brewers over at St. Nicholas Brewery. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I had a good time. I uh, loved meeting your group. It's a nice, huge group. But Doug is making beers for all the craft beerkins. Yes. We've had the opportunity to try the Harness Lager. Yes. We've had the uh, Bryant Brown Ale. Mm -hmm. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are debuting in this nice little growler, the Huntsberger Berry, the Huntsberger Berry, because Kevin is fruity, <laughs> and, and and what better way than with Smurfs being blue and all that? So we thought long and hard, and thank goodness Doug had some of this done. So you've not tried this yet. I have not, and I, I like I like the 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 berry flavored, or not even just necessarily berry flavored, but the fruit flavored beers. Whoa! Whoa! Um. I like the wheat beers too, but I, I do like the berry beers. And we, at the Carbondale Brew Fest, we tried a couple of different uh, berry flavored beers. Brainy Smurf. You have Brainy Smurf? Yeah, I have all my Smurf glasses oh. too from way back when. It's yeah. going to be a team effort. Yeah. All right. It's we got, got a nice that. berry so don't, color. Don't taste I anything won't taste yet. Yeah, I won't. Don't taste anything. All right. And I appreciate Doug doing this because we, we, uh, we met him at Carbondale Brew Fest too, right? Yes, we did. Carbondale Brew Fest, and I was really impressed oh, wow. with, uh, yeah, take a look at that. You can yeah. kind of see, take a look. You can tell there's a nice berry in there. I had the opportunity to already try this, but I want uh, I want you to look in the camera, okay. Kevin. Which look, one, the YouTube camera do both, or the do Facebook both. Okay. okay, and I want everybody to look at Kevin's face because the very first sip is what's really gonna say it because he can say anything after that. But we want to know, based on his expression, how his Huntsberger Berry tastes. All right, That's hit right. it. That's right. No pressure, right? No pressure. All right. We're looking. It's, it's almost got a Kool-Aid taste to it at the beginning. It's not bad. I, I like it. This berry is not what you would it have. It doesn't smack you in the face with the berry flavor. No, and it's not overly um, sweet. So a lot of your, your berries, uh, berry beers have a kind of a very strong sweet taste. Yeah. This one is a smooth sweet taste. I think Doug did a great job on this one. If you're looking for something that has a little bit more, uh, it's not an acidic, but a more of a vinegar based, it's, it's, it's very different. But what do you think, honestly? I, I honestly, I do like it. Um, a lot of times with the berry flavored or the fruit flavored beers, it, it sits a little heavy sometimes with the sweetness. This does not, it's not like overwhelmingly, it does not, like I said, it doesn't smack you in the face with, with the sweetness, but it, it is definitely uh, something that I would drink again. And, and you know, I got jokey smurf, so that, that's kind of fitting. So cheers. Cheers. Brainy smurf here. I know it all. <laughs> so I think. Well, I just you throw me out of the way. That that's to be debatable. I, I'm not sure about that. 
That's good, Doug. I, I don't know if you're watching now, but I do appreciate this. Uh, I, I'm honored and flattered by that. The yeah. Huntsberger Berry. The Huntsberger Berry. Or what I like to call the Huntsberger Dingleberry. <laughs> that's my favorite thing to call it, and that's what it'll always be. But it's the Huntsberger Berry. This is also, because it's not so sweet, this is one that you can drink continually. Some of the sweeter yeah. beers, uh, you want one, maybe two, and you're done. Yeah. But this one, if you are a berry flavor, you could drink this continually, probably three, maybe four. Yeah, you could definitely uh, have more of this. And... You know, we talked earlier about Gargamel being uh, the arrogant bastard beer. Right. He's trying to catch the Smurfs, and that's kind of where we're going with our trending topic this week of, <laughs> of, of catching things. Now, what would you like to catch or not catch? Well, there's certain things I don't want. You don't want things like the clap and chlamydia and stuff like that. I mean, that's probably not appropriate for our, our show, but it is a beer show. That's true. That's true. But... Everybody has been, for the last week, catching something that we all can talk about over and over, and that is... Pokemon Go! Pokemon Go. From a social standpoint, I gotta say, I'm not a fan, but I respect and appreciate it from a marketing standpoint, because let me tell you, VR is going to be the wave of the future, but nobody could really come up and say, hey, how can we get people to go out and, and basically overlaid their landscape and when you app. say vr just for folks who don't know virtual reality virtual reality it is coming it is going to happen in our lifetimes it is and here's what's happened thanks to pokemon uh single-handedly this game pokemon app uh we are going to see many spin-offs of this some of the spin-offs i would like to see is you know a you know a beer go app i'd like to go around virtually finding beer that would be awesome, right? Well, I would rather have an actual beer in hand. Well, I think that's beer. part of it. I, I think that's part and of it. And it could happen. Absolutely. The other thing with Pokemon Go is that we're not even going to talk. I don't want to talk about the negative effects because I, I'm very negative about it. I want to talk about the positive things. Um, if you haven't had a chance, make sure you go over to Kevin's blog because Kevin wrote this amazing article about, <laughs> we were talking about this in person, but he wrote this article about his two boys who rarely, rarely spend time together all summer and all of a sudden, they're hanging out. They called you the other day when we were together, what'd they say? <laughs> I'm out of balls. <laughs> I'm out of balls. Pokeballs, apparently. Yeah. I just downloaded it last night. I'm learning it. I don't understand it. My wife is into it. My daughter is into it. My two boys are into it. And I, when I posted that blog on Facebook, one, I'm surprised by the number of people who commented on it and didn't like rip me apart, but also who are in the same boat. Their families are bonding over this game and they've shared right. this blog, which is obviously what I want to see happen. So people are coming together over it. And I, I get it. There are negative sides to every right. in life, but for my experience, the, the Pokemon Go has been a positive thing for our family. Absolutely. And you know, uh, as negative as I am, and here's the deal. I, I just think it's silly. But is, is going around virtually uh, collecting beer with a Beer Go app silly? Yes, it is. It's not for me, but it wasn't geared towards me. It's geared towards a nice generation of 90s people, which we're kind of talking a little bit out of the 80s, but the 90s people that grew up with that to reconnect. Yeah. And, and you know what? At the end of the day, as long as there's safety, as long as people are, are being smart about it, I, I think that there's nothing wrong with other people using it. And if people don't want to, that's okay. Um, I was a little harsh. I made fun of some of the people that actually did it. And you know what? I will own up and fess. Even though it's not for me, go right at it. Have your own. My team uh, over at Harness Digital Marketing, uh, Laurel and Nicole, wrote a great article on how businesses yeah. can capitalize on it. So what we're going to do is we will post uh, Kevin's article uh, on, on, on it and ours on Craft Bearkins. We'll post it on our Craft Bearkins page. You guys can take a look at it and give us some feedback. I can't take credit for the Harness Digital Marketing uh, blog. That's all Laurel and Nicole. And your team, is, they're into it. I mean, Laurel, oh. Laurel, I know for sure. I've seen some of her posts. She's, yeah, Laurel, she's into it. Laurel's really into it. I, I'm not going to lie. I think... Um, I think if they if, if she she could get a job at Pokemon Go, she would leave me in a heartbeat. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. So, Do, okay, let me ask you this, and I know we're we're going over here, but is this a flash in the pan, or will this be something that will sustain? You know, I know it's overtaken Twitter on some devices as far as being used more 
Is this going to be the next thing in social media, do you think? I do. Uh, as much as I don't want to admit that, I think that the business platform that they have is great. I, I'm going to predict, and I could be totally wrong, but I'm mm -hmm. going to make some predictions here on where Pokemon Go is going. Yeah. I think that they're going to allow businesses to create their own Pokemon for a certain amount of, of, of money that will allow them to put them out there and draw people in. I think the business platform, the application is going to be huge. Obviously, if you read the article by Lauren and Nicole, there's people in even in our area that are capitalizing on it by utilizing lures and incense uh, to to basically create business. It's a buzz. Now, do I think it's going to level off in a little bit? Yes, it's a fad. Like anything, there's a kind of a uh, I give it maybe a month, yeah. and I think things will level out a little. Well, bit. I think also when kids go back to school. And I'm worried about that, yeah. but that's a whole other thing, uh, because I taught in the 90s, and I can tell you that that was one of the things that got banned, uh, was, really? uh, sorry, not the 90s, I, in the 2000s when we still had Pokemon cards. Sure. So Pokemon cards were banned, but I think there's going to be, a, if they look at this as a business model and not a game, I think that there's a lot of opportunity um, nationwide. To Jan basically. says it'll die off when people get their data plan bills, which we are unlimited here, that's, so we're Jan, good. Jan... Not if you that's a that's a rumor mill, Jan. I hope you're watching this. Look at your it doesn't use a lot of data going to really? Android. No, I didn't know that. What it does do is it sucks up a lot of time. That's the problem, and that's why I hesitated on doing it. But last night, literally, the four members of my family sitting here talking about their jiggly balls and googie goos and whatever they call them, and I'm like. I gotta get on board with this. There's nothing like talking out. about balls to bring your family together. Exactly. But exactly. Jan, no, that's actually, I know that's a lot, that was one of my initial concerns. I read up a little bit more. It's not really affecting data plans, no more than your Facebook, Facebook Live, some of your other uh, more streaming, because it's not streaming per oh, okay. se. It's just okay. not streaming per se. Uh, so uh, it's overlaying a map. Think of uh, Apple Maps. Let's see if he's coming back with me. It will do, oh, it will, oh, that's a him. I thought it was resisting, better. but it's hard. Yes. I'm still resist. Don't do it, Jan. <laughs> Don't do it. Now, I do want to give one last plug. Sure. Um, I was asked, since I'm an adamant uh, opponent of this, uh, Tracy over at Heron Signs yeah. and Newman and Camden are putting together. Who Tracy, by the way, made the craft beer can. Uh, he table made our he covering. made our table covering uh, over uh, Tracy Estes over at Heron Signs. He did do our um, our craft beer cans uh, sign for our table. But we are kind of, I shouldn't say we, they are putting on a, uh, a Pokemon event, and uh, it's going to be next Friday. There's an event. We'll also post that on the Craft Beer yeah. page as well. You can come over. If you don't know about it, you want to know a little bit more, to be honest, uh, it's blowing up. There's a lot of coverage of it. There's a lot of, of interest. So come there. Yes, it's about business. If you want to enjoy some of the features that Newman can, and you want to go talk to Tracy about how he can help your business, that's great. But we're going to have some people there just to kind of talk and see what this is all about. So even if you're just curious, it's a safe environment. Come there. Tracy, myself, will be there. He's dying for me to download this app. I don't know if I'll do it, but we, we'll see. You were very adamant against Snapchat for a very long time, too. I predict you are, <laughs> before it's all said and done, Tom Harness will be on Pokemon Go. Especially if they figure out a way to incorporate craft beer into it. That I'm down for. That I'm totally down for. We'll call Nintendo and see what we can get arranged. All right. But just for, just so I've been pointed out many times by my buddy Jim, uh, even though there's kind of a correct uh, a correlation or a connection with Nintendo, Pokemon Go is not actually uh, affiliated or associated with Nintendo. Really? Okay. No. Well, I'm learning all I, kinds of things. Yeah, so. yeah it's kind of a loose term, um, but I want to make sure because Jim... Uh, he pretty much went on my Facebook and ousted me on that. And that's, Jim, I've been drinking a little bit too. So that's my fault. Um, so, yeah. So, real quick, um, I noticed you have something in front here. Um, what's this box? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What, what do we got here? Is this an original? I had this very lunch box in third grade. Okay. Like I said, I saw that ad back in 1981 touting the debut of the Smurfs. Now, the original lunch box did not survive, but... I had a resurgence, and my wife is watching this, and she's going to cringe, but back in the mid-90s, I went through a phase where I went to yard sales, and I went to uh, flea markets and stuff, So basically, and I started collecting Smurf stuff, and now I, I purged almost 90% of that collection, and it's all so confined you, to this. Did now. you need an intervention? I did, and that was called getting married, <laughs> and, and as they say, the shit got real. So I got rid of all the Smurf stuff. I kept this lunchbox that I had picked up uh, in the aftermath of it all, and then 
the contents oh, no. inside. No. Yeah. Are you serious? And these are 99% of these are from my childhood of when I was a kid. Here's a Gargamel. Yes, I'm I'm obsessed. Easter Smurf. I mean, they had all kind they had a Smurf for every damn thing. Here's a firefighter. Here's a cop. Damn it, Kevin. I think you just lost some man points. Well, this, I, dude, I'm drinking fruity beer named after me. I, I think I lost man points a long time ago. Are, are you? There's like, was there like 40, 50? Oh, wait, hold on. I'm not sure how many. Here's the there. bastard himself. <laughs> There's Gargamel. Football smurf. That gives me some man points, right? He's a football player. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to lie. After about a few beers, <laughs> Smurfette looks pretty good. <laughs> She's looking pretty good. Look at that. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. enough making fun of you. Yes. All right. It's, it's easy to do, though. So the 80s, obviously, were very important to both of us. Yes. We connected with that that decade. Absolutely. As, as many of you, I'm sure, as well. And, and, and we hope to make the, the remaining episodes of the 80s, uh, 80s, well, we're on 89, 88, 88, 87, and the rest of them 80s themed. If you have some ideas for that, please let us know. But I want to give another shout out before we rate our beer to Doug Brinkley over at the Southern Illinois Home Brewers Group uh, for actually making our uh, Kevin Huntsberger Berry. Yeah, and we talk about homebrew, and it's not what you think when it comes to homebrew. A lot of times you think, oh, this is somebody that's just trying to. Doug has it all down. I mean, he's got the setup. You've been over there. I've seen the pictures. Doug is it. absolutely amazing. Yeah. The group, the Southern Illinois Home Brewers Group, is absolutely amazing. Um, it's really not a homebrew club. They really take it seriously. There, there's about 25, 30 people to, uh, today that I saw at St. Nicholas Brewery. They're just a great group of people, and Doug really deserves to have his own brewery. I'm telling you, I I love all his beer. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, not just because he made one named after us. But well, it's and good. the harness. What was it? Harness, harness Lager. Lager and the uh, Bryant Brown Ale. Bryant Brown Ale. Superb. Superb yeah. stuff. And I actually like the Bryant Brown Ale a little bit more than I like the Harness Lager, which is modeled off of Yingling. Yeah, so, good stuff. So Absolutely. we got a rate. Absolutely. So, without a doubt, for me, this is a drink it. There's no way that I would piss in this, and there's no way that I would use this as a message in a bottle because I don't want to share. I actually want to drink this. I agree. I totally agree. And Doug, once again, thank you. My wife just posted she wants a sip of it, so I'm not going to drink the rest of this, but... I appreciate Doug doing this, and uh, I'm flattered, humbled, and, and, and honored by the fact that he took the time to do this for us. Yeah, and this is probably the only thing of, of that has your name on it or anything that's associated with you that I'll put in my mouth. <laughs> you didn't have the Kevin Hunsberger? I, no, I didn't. You never had... Oh, that's a whole other thing. I never put the Ke Kevin Hunsberger in my mouth. This is the only thing that I put in my mouth. Though I did get close when we did the uh, one episode. I almost kissed you. Just saying. <laughs> Little do you forget. Oh, boy. <laughs> so on that note, yes. on that note, we're going to finish up this episode. Please give us some feedback. Uh, also remember, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, and we're on Facebook. Please share. Give us some input. We really want to make this show go, uh, go places. We want to do something with it, not only to have fun, but to bring a little bit of smile in this world right now that probably could use it. Absolutely. Totally agree. And thank you for uh, making all this happen. Yeah, thank you, man. All right, should we end with our little Smurf? Sure. Let's do it. La, 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 la,